Hello everyone, welcome to Come Sit at My Table. We're Tom and Melissa, and we're really glad that you've come by to take a seat at the table today. We are making homemade au gratin potatoes. Now, it's really easy to make au gratin potatoes from a box. We've all done it, I've done it, especially when I'm in a hurry, it's easy to throw in the oven. But there's just nothing quite like homemade au gratin potatoes. So let's talk about what we're going to use today to make our au gratin potato dish. First, of course, we're going to use potatoes. Now your oven's ready. <laughs> there's our oven. By the way, you want to preheat your oven to 375 degrees. Okay, we're going to use about three pounds of potatoes. Now, if you use a really watery potato, and I'm not gonna name them all, but if you use a watery potato, your au gratin potatoes are going to be watery. If you use something like a russet potato, something that's not watery but is more starchy, then your, your dish won't be watery. In fact, the starch will help to make it thick and creamy. So it's best to use something like a russet potato. You need about three, three and a half pounds of those. Now, I've already done two potatoes this size, and I'll show you that I've already got those in here and layered. And this is the third one I'm going to do. If it's not quite enough, if it doesn't quite fill up my dish as much as I want, I've got some more smaller russet potatoes that I can use to fill in. But I think three will be plenty. Now, I did buy a new toy. This is called Once For All and it is a slicer. I'm gonna get rid of that in because nobody wants to eat that. And I want you to look, well, there's some bad places, so we're gonna get rid of those ends. I want you to look what short work this makes of slicing potatoes. They are flying, aren't they? Woo, there they go. Look what a nice, slice of potato. Now we want to slice our potatoes about an eighth of an inch thick. And then all we're going to do is just layer them right in our pan, in our casserole dish. We're just going to kind of, I call it shingling them. You just kind of lay them overlapping a little bit and go all the way around your pan just overlapping some, and don't forget the middle. And you know, I thought I was probably going to use another one, but I think that's fine right there. That's going to be enough. So that's all we need. Now I'm gonna throw away these ends that had a bad place. And I'm going to move my new little toy. Isn't that an awesome way to slice any kind of hard vegetable like that? It's called a once for all, and I'll tell you, I ordered it yesterday on Amazon and got it this morning. So, there you go. I'm gonna set my potatoes over to the side, and remember I used three of those, it was about three pounds. Now, we're going to also use three tablespoons of butter that I'm going to melt in a saucepan, and I'm gonna go ahead and start that. We're also going to use an equal amount of flour, and that's just all-purpose flour, so three tablespoons of that. We're going to use two and a half cups of whole milk, and we're going to use one and a half teaspoons of salt, and a half a teaspoon of pepper. We're going to add one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. I'm also adding some grated Gruyere cheese, and I'm gonna show you that. This is a smoked Gruyere. But let me tell you, you can use just about any melting cheese that you want to use. People use cheddar, mozzarella, Gouda, just about anything works. If you like it and it will melt, you can use it. So, you can, Really, just go to the grocery store, look in the cheese section, and have a good time. Melissa and I absolutely love cheese. And 
This is the one we chose for today. Now, because it has a little bit of a rind on it and we are melting this, I am going to take the rind off. Normally, if we were just eating the cheese, if we were just slicing it and eating it on crackers or you know, on a char charcuterie board or something, I would leave the rind on there because I, I think it's pretty good. But since we're melting it, I am just going to take just a little bit of that rind off just to make sure that it melts. Now, let me get rid of that. And I will show you, let me move this down here where you can see it, Melissa. We need about, now that was an eight ounce package and we need about, oh, I'm gonna say 10 to 12 ounces. So I'm just going to grate a little bit more of this to go with what we already had grated grated sounds like i'm saying g-r-a-d-e-d -E -D, like our grated papers but it's grated it's just my west virginia hillbilly accent coming out can't help that so let's just get a little bit of that grated in there okay i think that should do it if we need more after we make our sauce i can always come back and put more in it Okay, so let's go down here now. We're going to take our flour. Melissa, you may. I'll come around you. Okay. And I'm gonna move that lid out of the way so it doesn't get too hot. All right, I'm gonna turn this up just a little so that butter melts. And then we're going to put the flour in and let that start to cook. And I'm gonna turn this up to about medium because we want to cook that flour. If you don't cook that flour for, oh, probably a minute at least, you're going to have a raw flour taste to your, your um, cheese sauce. And you don't wanna taste raw flour in your cheese sauce. So I'm getting all that down off the sides so it can cook. Mix that butter and flour in together really well. Let it start cooking there. You can see it's starting to bubble. It tells us it's cooking. Now, while that is cooking there for just a second, I'm going to go ahead and measure out my salt one and a half teaspoons and a half teaspoon of pepper. Okay, let me stir that. Make sure that's cooking really well. Okay. Now I'm going to start adding my milk. And this is two and a half cups of whole milk. Probably should switch to a whisk, actually. I think I will. I'll get it. Okay, thank you for telling me that. Get that with my whisk. I just want to make sure we get those lumps out of there. Now, what's this remind you of? What, what else do we make that we start with flour and some fat either some bacon grease or sausage grease or some butter and add milk. If you said gravy, you're correct. So we just keep adding our milk, letting this cook. Make sure we get everything off the sides and make sure there are no lumps. Looks pretty good, I don't see any lumps in it. I'm going to add the rest of my milk. Let that come up to heat. And it's going to take a minute or so for that to start to thicken. Whoop, just slush that right out of there. So let it cook here for a second. 
You know, all rotten potatoes are one of our son-in-law's favorite foods. He loves all rotten potatoes. So I guess we should have called and told Luke to come over tonight, huh? He's probably tired after working though. Does anybody know the difference in au gratin potatoes and scalloped potatoes? Is there a difference? Yes, there is. Au gratin potatoes have cheese in them. Scalloped potatoes normally do not. They're made with just milk and cream. That is thickened. So, our rotten potatoes are, in our opinion, better because who doesn't want cheese in their potatoes? You need cheese in there, don't you? It's hard to say no to cheese. It really is. I have splashed this out all over the stove. I made a mess. Okay. So this is starting to thicken. I can feel it on the bottom. Starting to thicken up. It just takes a little while. You have to be patient. Give it time. We had a couple of subscribers who posted messages to us on other videos and asked for an all gratin potato recipe. And I think this one is really good and very simple. It's got very simple ingredients in it. Oh, let's go back and talk about the cheese. I don't think I finished that. We used Gruyere, but you can use just about anything that will melt. Mozzarella cheese even works. If you like mozzarella, you can use cheddar. Now, I'm just gonna be honest with you and tell you cheddar's not my favorite in, in all rotten potatoes. I don't dislike cheddar, but it's not my favorite in all rotten potatoes. You can use Gouda, Fontina, Havarti, and I don't want to get anything started. But you can even use Velveeta. Velveeta works. So if you like Velveeta, use some Velveeta in it. Uh, probably half a pound of Velveeta. Eight, eight ounces, ten ounces, somewhere in there. Can you see that this is starting to thicken a little bit? Yes. Yep. Bubble. Yep, starting to bubble around the edges. I'm gonna turn it down just a hair. Um, but any cheese that you like that will melt will work just fine in this. Of course, if you use something like a cheddar, it's going to be a different color. It's not going to be white like this. If you use Havarti or Gouda, you know, it's gonna be the color of that cheese. So, you use the cheese you like. If you've never made homemade au gratin potatoes, I really would, I'm gonna turn this way down now, I really would encourage you to try Gruyere and smoked Gruyere if you, if you like the smoky flavor, we like that. We did see one at the store that was a it was smoked bacon Gouda. Yes. Gouda. Oh. That would be good too, but we opted for this. Okay, I'm going to turn this way down because it has thickened, and I'm going to start adding my cheese. Oh, I know what I didn't add. I didn't add the Worcestershire sauce. I'll do that. Okay, so I'm just going to stir in my cheese a little bit at a time, handful at a time, trying not to spill it as I move it over here. Stir that in and let it melt. So really this, even though the basics of this are the same no matter, when you switch out the cheeses, you can get a totally, totally different flavor in your dish, just depending on the cheese. So don't be afraid to play with it. Play with it and make it your own. Do it the way you like it. 
Mmm, look at that. Look how thick and cheesy that is. I'm gonna turn that fire completely off and finish putting my cheese in. I'm sorry, I almost did it backhanded again. That's all right. Okay, and I'm going to add my Worcestershire sauce. I'm just going to put, I may not even put a whole teaspoon in. Just a little bit, just for that flavor. All right, let's stir that in. And now we are ready to pour it over our potatoes. Now, once we get it over our potatoes, of course it has to bake. So let me move all this out of the way. Boy, I can make a mess when I cook, can I? That's all right. Won't be much to clean up. Grab my. Let me switch places with you. Where Where do you want to go? I'll go over this side. Okay. Let me see you. Okay. Now I am going to have to have a spatula here. Clean up my cheese sauce. Because we want that all in the pot. Okay. So in we go. And we want to go slow and let that run down in there. All over those potatoes. In fact, I may even take a fork or a knife and just kind of move them around a little bit to make sure that it's all down in there. We sure don't want a dry spot, do we? Oh yeah, see it going down in those crevices and holes? We want it to cover everything. Did we talk about the panko? Well, we mentioned it as an ingredient. We I'm did. Not sure what else you want? I think. Okay. Maybe I, I couldn't remember saying it. I knew it, so I don't know. Okay, I'm going to grab a spatula here. Give me just a second, because I want all that out there. Okay. I'm going to scrape that out. No wasted cheese sauce. By the way, you don't want to curdle your milk. So be careful how hot you get your pan and don't let it overheat because you don't want curdled milk. Now, I am going to move those around just a little bit because I want to make sure that cheese sauce is down in there over everything. So I'm just going to kind of jiggle them, get all that down in there. Make sure it bakes down in all those potatoes. Okay. You layer your sauce in your potatoes? Yeah, you could, and you know, if I had to do over, I'd do that. I've done that before and I forgot about it. You got excited with your new little gadget. I did. <laughs> I am so excited over that new toy. I've always used just a regular mandolin. And, you know, those things, <laughs> they can be dangerous. I'll just tell you, I did cut myself on it one time. And made me a little skittish. So when I saw this new slicer... I thought, yep, that's for me. Okay, so we're just gonna take some panko. We're not gonna completely cover it. We don't want it to be, you know, breaded. What were you wanting to discuss about the panko? Oh, just, I, I didn't know if we mentioned that we were going to put panko on it or not. Couldn't remember if we even mentioned that as we went through the ingredients. But you said we did. I think so. I could be wrong. Like I said, okay, I, knew well, was, I knew it was there, so I don't know. Okay, so if we didn't, we are putting some panko breadcrumbs on top. I'm going to guess that's uh, probably a little less than a fourth of a cup. It's just sprinkled on there. It's not thick. Okay, we're going to cover our dish. We're going into our 375-degree oven. 
We're gonna let it bake probably at least 30 minutes and then we'll take a knife and check the potatoes to see if they're soft. If they are, then we're ready. If they aren't, then we'll let it bake for a few more minutes, but we'll probably start around 25, 30 minutes and see how it does. All right, we will be back as soon as it's ready. Our potatoes are out of the oven. And first, I must tell you that Melissa has told me that I made a mistake. I misspoke and said the potatoes went in for 30 minutes. It's actually one hour and 30 minutes. These are these went in for just a little less than that. I think about an hour and 20 minutes. But I've checked them with a knife and they are done. So... I just wanted to clear that up. You are going to see a difference between what I said earlier in the video and what the printed directions are down in the description box. Now, let me show you how to check these. And where is that knife, Melissa? It's right over there. Yeah, there it is. So, this is the way you check it. Just take a knife and go down through the middle of the potatoes if it goes right in with no resistance and comes right out, you know it's done. If the edges, the edges should be plenty done if the middle is done. So that's all you have to do is just check to see if a knife will go through them. If it does, then you know it's ready. Okay. Now, you can't really just scoop these out one layer at a time. You just have to kind of go down in them, get a scoop, and take it out. Yum. Look at that. It's delicious. It sure does. And it smells really good too. Oh my gosh, our house smells so good right now. <laughs> I'm gonna move that out of the way so I don't get burned. <sighs> These are gonna burn my mouth, I can already tell. Look at the steam coming off of them. We could take a, just a little break and come back in a minute so you don't risk Burning that might not be mouth. bad. Before I before I take a bite, though, let me ask you to go right below the video and click the thumbs up. That just says you like the video. If you've never done it, we would appreciate you clicking that subscribe button, the little notification bell beside of it, and the word all. That just subscribes you to our channel. That's how we build our channel and have more people. And we really would appreciate you doing that. Also, Remember that right under the video where you see the title of this recipe, if you'll click that title or anywhere in that box, that box will expand. Melissa always puts the written recipe for every one of our videos in that description box. And right under the recipe is our contact information. And then, of course, under that is a place where you can leave a comment. And we do appreciate those comments. Now, I really meant like a bigger break than this. But I know, but I want to try it. I love smoked Gruyere. And of course, I already know these are good, but we have to take a bite, right? Babe, you don't want the first bite? No, I'm good. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't. It's too hot for you. That's it? right. I think it's too hot for you, but... It is. I warned you. I'm not worried about the potato so much as I am the cheese. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that smoked Gruyere is so good. It really is delicious. Wow. And I'm just going to tell you, that pan will feed Melissa and me for the next several days. We will have that with every meal the next four, five days. Okay, I'll eat the rest of those in a minute. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Please, if you would, go down and click that thumbs up and that subscribe button and leave us a comment. Don't forget to click the description box so you can get that recipe. Thank you for watching. We sure do appreciate it. And we want you to remember, you are always welcome to Come sit at my table. Have a great day.